Dear Mr. Bastard, my wife needs an urgent kidney transplant. <laughs> Dear Mr. Bastard, I'm unemployed and I can't afford to feed my family. <laughs> oh, God. Why are constituents' letters always so boring? Listen to this. Victor Crosby, son of a communist coal miner, won Accrington for the Conservatives, overturning a 7,000 Labour majority. So what? Well, Crosby said in his victory speech he intends to become the most right-wing MP in the House. <laughs> Ah, good morning, gentlemen. Oh, oh, hello, Sir Greville. New glasses? Oh, they really suit you. Well, I told you he was an inveterate trawler, didn't I? <laughs> Actually, this is my spare pair. I seem to mislaid my own. Oh, um, were you wearing them when you came in? Oh, no, no, of course you wouldn't have been, would you? Well, um, perhaps you dropped them. I'll, I'll look. And, uh, who might you be? Oh, this gentleman is Victor Crosby, the hero of last week's Accrington by-election. Oh, really? Do you know I had no idea that the EC Butter Mountain was eligible to stand for Parliament? <laughs> Gosh, you're Victor Crosby. You were in my newspaper. Was he really, Piers? The last time I had something that white and flabby in my newspaper had just been fried in batter. <laughs> well, don't mind, the star Victor. His political career's almost over and failure's made him bitter. <laughs> you're Alan Bastard. <laughs> they told me that you were good-looking. Is this the desk, then, Greville? Uh, yes, yes. It's rather small, isn't it? Still, you know what they say. Like prick, like desk. <laughs> Still, I suppose it'll do until I get my first ministerial post. Oh, Victor, Victor, don't be so hasty. You must expect to spend at least three months on the back benches first. But, 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 you mean you're giving him my desk? Yes. Where am I supposed to sit? How about the windowsill? As good a place as any for a vulture to perch, I would have thought. Perhaps I left them in the tea room. <laughs> All right, here's shit. <laughs> Hello? Yes, hang on a minute, please. It's the Sunday Express. They want to talk to the most right-wing Tory in Parliament. Out the way, Crosby. <laughs> Hello? Victor Crosby speaking. <laughs> yes, that's right, the conqueror of Accrington. Well, how much do you usually pay bastard? That's pathetic. Uh, Dublin, add a couple of noughts. Hey, you want a quote? Yes, I'll give you something radical. The speaking of English should be made compulsory throughout Europe. Good morning. Uh, call that radical. I say that we should demand the return of all the bits of France that used to belong to Henry V. What? Well, never frogs can terminate our English stock. Never. No, we should send in the army to take out those sheep-murdering Frenches once and for all. I once took out a Frenchie. <laughs> she wanted to kiss with her mouth open and I wasn't wearing a contraceptive. <laughs> Did he escape from some sort of political asylum? There is nothing wrong with Piers Fletcher Dervish. He's a valuable member of our great Conservative Party. Ah, am I really, Alan? Of course you are, Piers. With you on our side, no one can say that the Tories discriminate against the mentally handicapped. Or be physically underendowed. <laughs> How did you know about... <laughs> Hello? Who is it? What do you mean, who is it? What sort of question is that? No, oh, it's you. Where did you spend last night? I had an all-night sitting. Ooh, hope you didn't suffocate the poor girl. Oh, see he. And then I spent the night at my club. I didn't know they had rooms at the Soho People Armour. Sarah, I haven't got time for your cabaret. Why did you tell Victor Crosby that I've got a small penis? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Alan. I just bumped into him at Fortnum's Tea Rooms and we got chatting and conversation flagged and your penis popped up. You're having an affair with him, aren't you? Of course I'm not, Alan. I mean, he's, he's fat and flabby and, ooh, he's got horrible greasy hair. Didn't stop you with Nigel Lawson, did it? Oh, darling. <laughs> Jealous, aren't you? Now, why are you so obsessed with this Victor Crosby chap? I hate him. He's got my desk. He's got my newspaper column. He'll be in the cabinet soon. Mind you, that's not saying very much. Everyone's been in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. You haven't. Mind you, with your naughty political career, you've got more chance of being in the Labour cabinet. Mm. <laughs> Darling? Hmm? Shall I get dressed, or do you want to do something about that small swelling? All right. I'll get the equipment. <laughs> Actually, this is my spare pair. I seem to have mislaid the others. Wallet time, mother. What? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't speak unemployed. <laughs> Listen, we ain't driving, man. No, you're not driving. <laughs> yeah. 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 We ain't driving, man. I play Miami Vice.
couple of ghastly little office you've got. It suffices. Right, let's get down to cases, shall we? We're taking a considerable risk having you here. I hope it's going to be worth it. Hold on, hold on. Where's all the famous Paddy O'Rourke Irish Blarney that so enthralls them at the Labour Party conference? Oh, I just put that on to please the party faithful. Between you, me and the bust of Clem Attlee there, I'm not even Irish. <laughs> but our research has shown that Labour only gets into power if it's led by chaps with a regional accent. <laughs> Gateskill and Foot were posh. Look what happened to the Poles. Absolutely massacred. But, um, Ramsay MacDonald and, uh, Harold Wilson put on the old patois and, uh, bingo. What do you mean, put on? Well, for instance, everyone thinks Harold Wilson's a Yorkshireman. Isn't he? No, oh, comes from Basingstoke. <laughs> and Ramsay MacDonald was French. So we all decided, you see, that Neil should go down to the public library and get out some uh, Mike Bevan records and become Welsh. <laughs> now, you said on the telephone that uh, you had something important for us. What is it? It's me. <laughs> I'd like to join the Labour Party, please. What, you? You're the most right-wing Tory in the house. Well, after a bit to Crosby. No, no, this is all very suspect. I mean, how do I know it's not some Tory dirty trick? Oh, come on, Paddy. I mean, if it was, they wouldn't send me, would they? They'd send someone much more plausible, like uh, Peter Walker. I mean, he's so wet, they're calling him Flipper now. <laughs> is it, why, why join the Labour Party? You're, you're ahead in the polls. I know. Oh, Paddy, it's just so boring being a Tory now that Maggie's left. I mean, have you ever had a conversation with John Major? No. Nor have I. I mean, I've tried to, but I keep nodding off halfway through. I'm not saying he's dull, but he is the only boy in history to run away from the circus to join a firm of accountants. <laughs> yeah, but remember, I mean, I mean, Margaret, she was humdrum and, uh, well, frankly, common until Thatcher and Thatcher got at her. I mean, John Major has the treatment, you know, a new voice, new hairstyle, new handbag. I know, I know. And that's where I can be so useful to you. I can help to even the balance by bringing you hot inside information. Think of it. Manifesto leaks. Copies of secret strategic briefing papers. Oh, yes. And in exchange for what? And we haven't got any money. It's all gone on dialect coaching. John Smith's taking ages getting over that Eton accent. <laughs> I want to be in the Labour cabinet. <laughs> I know, it's shocking, isn't it? I need to get my hands on the levers of power. And Paddy, you are the chap with the biggest lever. <laughs> Wouldn't you be you know, abandoning your most heartfelt political principles? What heartfelt political principles? <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, of course. Silly me. <clears throat> well? Well, I don't think Neil would buy it. In, in fact, I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't. Far too suspicious. Still, thank you very much for coming. Oh, look, who's that? What? It's you, isn't it? Look, it's Paddy sitting on the Labour front bench. Well, sitting on a lot of them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose I, I, I could um, I could get Glynis to, uh, you know, persuade Neil to give you some sort of post. Splendid, Paddy, splendid. Now, ideally, I'd like a job with lots of travel, lots of glamour, lots of influence, but obviously not too much actual work. <laughs> and how about uh, Minister of Sport? Oh, no. No? Um, or uh, a bishopric? Yes, it'll be in Neil's gift. No, I, I'd like the Foreign Office. Oh, but we've, we've got Gerald Kaufman down for that. Well, isn't that just tough? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you actually know anything about foreign affairs? No. Why, is that important? No, fair enough. <laughs> And the scarred foreign secretary, Gerald Kaufman, uh, oh, uh, Bishop of Bath and Wells. Yes, he'd love that. Splendid. Well, it's been a pleasure doing treachery with you. See you in Downing Street, Paddy. Well, hang on, hang on. Uh, how about some tangible sign of goodwill? I mean, when, when, when we start seeing all these leaked documents, then? Well, how about these, for starters? Margaret Thatcher's secret love letters to Gaza. <laughs> Don't read one of the sprinklers, though. These are red hot. Oh, bloody hell. No wonder he was crying. <laughs> Towards a new economic miracle, the case for slavery <laughs> by Victor Crosby. Slavery keeps down wages by creating a large unpaid workforce, reduces population growth by splitting up families, eliminates travel congestion by making slaves sleep at the workplace, simultaneously solving the housing crisis. This is brilliant. I wish I'd written this. Oh, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> you just missed a really smashing debate on the environment. Really, Piers. Did you know that leaded petrol can cause brain damage? Does it? You must have been bottle fed on four star. <laughs> Crosby was brilliant. He made you look like a wet. <laughs> You're jealous of him, aren't you? Yes, I am, Piers. Oh, Piers, I bought you a present. Oh, really? Yes. It's in the corner. Oh. Let's go and have a look. Yes. Now, you see the window? Yes. <laughs> Say sorry, Piers. <laughs> 50 pounds for the window pane. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, 
Did Sir Greville wet his pants too at Crosby's brilliant contribution? Uh, I don't know, Alan. He wasn't there. What do you mean he wasn't there? He's the Secretary of State. He's supposed to be there. Oh, perhaps he was looking for his glasses. Perhaps he was looking for his glasses. Get them, mate. I won't disturb you. Let's go to bed. Wait for a second, darling. There's a packet of three in my red box. Silly, baby. There's a machine in the bathroom. Oh, well, may as well use the studs. <laughs> Victor Crosby is an oily, ingratiating little Herbert. <laughs> of course that's not my opinion. I'm quoting the Prime Minister. <laughs> oh, Bing, congratulations. I hear your maiden speech last night was absolutely brilliant. What are you after, bastard? <laughs> oh, Bingo, don't be so prickly. I'm offering my heartfelt acclaim. You know they're saying it was the best maiden speech since mine? <laughs> Yours? No, I've, I've had better speakers attached to a five-pound transistor radio. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Why, only this morning, Mrs Thatcher was telling me over breakfast how much she admires you. How if only you'd been elected a year ago, she wouldn't have had to endorse the Prince of Greyness, John Major. Oh, you, you had breakfast with her? Where? I'm not at liberty to divulge, but... Oh, come on, Vic. You don't think she gets that warm glow of sexual satisfaction from Dennis, do you? <laughs> she likes me. She knows I exist. She knows everything. I love her. <laughs> She knows. <laughs> I cried all night when that vile, malcontent Hesseltine turned against her. That's right, that's right, Vic. You're not alone. What do you know about the November the 22nd movement? November the 22nd? <laughs> but, hey, she was ousted. Exactly. The movement is a hardcore of dedicated Thatcher loyalists sworn to... Br <gasps> no. I've said too much. <laughs> She's coming back, isn't she? She'll rise again. <laughs> how do I... How do I... Steady, Vic, steady! You have to earn her trust. How? Send her a Valentine card. <laughs> Valentine card. Uh, that's, that's a brilliant idea, bastard. Now, uh, why are you doing this for me? Because I want to be your friend. Because you're going to the top, Vic. And I want to be there with you when you get there. Imagine what we could do together, you and I. We could abolish the NHS. Yes. We could disenfranchise women. Brilliant. We could reintroduce slavery. <laughs> that is exactly what I was going to say in my article for the Sunday Express. No. Oh, you're really on my wavelength. Maybe so, Vic, maybe so. But boy, oh boy, you broadcast a much stronger signal. <laughs> oh, yes, make no mistake. You could be a leading light of the November the 22nd movement if it wasn't... If it wasn't for what? <sighs> well, if it wasn't for the fact you're such a ragamuffin... I mean, look at you. She likes her boys well turned out. Look at us, parky, bakey, meaty. We all get our suits in Savile Row. Well, I mean, where did you get that thing? Swindon. So it's true. Yes. Yes, I admit it. I, I do need money. That makes me very happy, Vic. Because it means I can help you. I can be your friend. Here, what the hell? There's a thousand pounds. Go on, take it. Buy yourself a new suit. And what the hell? Have my emergency Valentine card. Go on, take the lot, new friend. A thousand pounds. I... Thank you, Alan. I say, you should just mind the red roses. That's the sort of thing you could send to Neil Kick. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then. Get out your pen. Oh, Christ! <laughs> oh, no. How did that get in there? I'll help you. God. Oh, uh, I think it's broken. But that's all right. You can use your left hand. Uh, well, don't trip on the... Uh, Sorry, that's really hurt. Yeah, you can use my hand. Uh, so, uh, well, I, I just write something and sign my name? No, Vic, this is a Valentine card. You're supposed to use a code name that suggests it's you without actually signing your own name. I mean, I was going to put to Margaret from your big boy on the back benches. <laughs> but she'd know that was from you. Well, she knows it's not from Colin Moynihan. <laughs> I get it. So, 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 so what shall I put? Why not put from your newest recruit? Uh, Kissy, kissy, kiss. <laughs> Lovely. I'll just pop it in her cubbyhole. Well, we all live in hope. <laughs> From your newest recruit.
This paper comes from the red box of a senior cabinet minister. And it clearly shows the government's cynical scheme to abolish the poll tax. They are going to put VAT on mortgage repayments. I have promised not to reveal my informer's name. Then the chief whip shone this really bright light in my eyes and made me tell them everything I know. I thought you weren't gone long. Well, you must be shattered, Piers. If there was a spare chair, you could sit down. Yeah. Haven't they grilled you yet, Crosby? Me? <laughs> I'm way above suspicion. Sir Greville looks upon me as a son. Clear your desk, Crosby. Oh, congratulations, Crosby. That must be the quickest promotion. Oh, shut up, Fletcher Davis, you credit. <laughs> What's up? You traitorous working-class worm. To think I took you into my confidence and how did you repay me? By stealing papers from my red box. Ah, I don't understand. Alan, you're my friend. Say something. Your friend? You two-faced turncoat. And to think we almost let him infiltrate this noble old party of ours. I've misjudged you, Bastard. Many do. <laughs> Without your help, we'd never have trapped you. I admit I do need money. That's the sort of thing you give to Neil Kinnock. Four thousand pounds. If Bastard had managed to take your treacherous phone call... No, 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 he's faked it! Oh, really? And what about the thousand pounds, Constable? <laughs> well? It was a gift from Bastard. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Bastard has never given anyone a gift in his life. Absolutely not. <laughs> the tape, of course, was our first clue. And then we compared your handwriting with the anonymous note you sent to Kinnock from your newest recruit. Crosby, how could you? It fooled us at first. You'd written it with your left hand, but our experts soon... No, 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 that was on my Valentine card that I sent Mrs. Thatcher. Get him out of my sight, Constable. <laughs> Piers! Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Well, Bastard, you've performed a noble service for the party. There should be a gong in this for you. Oh, that's all right. I don't want a knighthood. Uh, we were thinking more of an MBE. Is that all? The sort of thing you give to people like Gaza. Uh, there is something I can offer you there. Oh, really? What? These. Oh, good, you found them. Where? Uh, I found them in a certain bathroom in Belgravia that you won't be visiting anymore. Do you get my drift? Oh, I see. <laughs> all right. There is, of course, a finder's fee in return for not telling your wife where I found them. Understood. Thank you, Minister. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, get that, would you, Piers? Oh, yes, of course, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's the Sunday Express. Sunday Express. Hello. Alan Bastard here. That's right. Fatso's gone. <laughs> Good old Express. Always the first to know. <laughs> well, I'd be delighted to. Cost you a lot of money, though. That'll do nicely. It's called... Towards a New Economic Miracle, The Case for Slavery, by Alan Bastard, indisputably the most right-wing member of Parliament. <laughs>